Hi, this is Chris from the engineering department at Alchemy Coffee. And in light of the fact that a lot of us and a lot of you are going to have closed cafes for the next few weeks or even a couple of months, here are some bits of advice for how to make sure your machine stays clean, operable and hygienic over the coming few weeks. So just a quick video to give you a little bit of advice on making sure that your coffee machine stays good and healthy so that when you reopen, it will be able to be used. You don't want the water sitting in there for three months not being used. It's not good for the sake of the hygiene of the machine or for the cafe itself. And same goes for the water filter. So a few steps to help you avoid that becoming an issue. First thing we're going to do is we're going to drain the water out of the coffee boiler using the three group heads that you usually make your coffee with. Now we've put jugs underneath ours because in some cafes, sometimes the drains do get a little bit blocked up and cannot handle all of the water flowing out all in one go. So what we're recommending doing is starting pouring one group head, giving it 10 or 15 seconds, and then starting the next one, and then the next one, so that you have a chance to pour them each away individually. Now you want to keep this process up for about five minutes or so to make sure that you've got plenty of time to drain all of the water out of that front boiler and have it all fill up again with fresher water. Of course, if you have a sink available, you can always pour it down the sink. The sink would not normally have lots of coffee grounds and lots of fats. And so it's likely it'll be a lot easier to drain from the sink. But just to avoid all issues, do stagger the group heads. And this will also be drawing water through the water filter cartridge as well, which is ideal because just like the boilers, you don't want the water sitting there for anywhere between a couple of weeks or up to three months. So one of the main reasons that we're making this video is because having contacted our suppliers who provide the water filters and provide the water filters to a lot of our customers, their recommendation is that water be flushed through the filters at a minimum of once a week. Now this is to help prevent any biological growth from occurring inside the filters, which obviously you do not want for drinking water supply. So now that you've drained and refilled the front boiler and replaced all of the water in it, you're also going to want to do that to the back boiler, the boiler which powers the steam ones and your hot water tank and you're going to use that hot water tap to do that. Now you're going to want to drain 50, 60 ounces out in three cycles, just to make sure you have replaced all of the water in the tank. So, with a 20 ounce pot, we'll fill it up and drain it three times, and then give it time to reheat and repressurize and do the same thing again. If you were using a smaller one, say a 12 ounce, you'd want to fill this up and drain it five or six times in a row, give it a break and repeat that process two more times. After you've drained 50, 60 ounces from the boiler, you want to give it a break. Now uh, with our machine, it is very, very powerful, so it's hard to outrun it. But on your pressure gauge for the steam boiler, the one that has roughly 1.5 indicated at the top of it, your ideal pressure, you'll see that that's now dropped. So you want to give it time to repressurize, because without the pressure, that hot water tap is not going to work. It relies on the pressure to push it through, same as the steam ones. Once you've repeated that cycle three times, so in our case, we would have removed three times, three 20 ounce jugs of water from the steam boiler, 180 ounces. It's had plenty of time to refill and repressurize between those three cycles. You've replaced all the water in the machine that you're going to need to for that week. After having done this, our recommendation, our strong recommendation, is that you do turn off the machine and cut the power supply. Now, with a lot of the cafes that we visit and a lot of the customers we have, there is some debate as to whether or not it's good to turn off your machine at night. If you're going to be leaving on the premises for a week, turns on or more unsupervised, it's going to be trying to stay at pressure all week. It's going to be using up electricity. And if it is turned on and if anything does go wrong with it, it's going to be unsupervised for days before it is caught. If the machine is turned off and the water supply is then turned off to it, there is nothing that can happen to the machine can't accidentally overpressure, and you won't be building up scale in the meantime and spending money on the electricity for it. So our recommendation is that when you are done, you turn your machine off. And then we're going to turn off the water supply. Now, with a lot of machines and a lot of our customers, the water supply feeding up to it underneath is nice and obvious, and there will be a tap or a stopcock on it. Most of the taps, if they are a lever, if the lever is in line with the pipe, water is flowing. If it is across the pipe, water is not flowing. So that's the position you want to put it in. If it is a turn handle stopcock, it should be nice and obvious which way. If it's currently on and you can't turn it to the right, then turning it to the left will turn it off. Nice and simple. Some taps and stopcocks are a little hard to spot if you haven't had to deal with them before or you weren't the one that installed it on the premises. 
Some of them do require a flathead screwdriver and they are going to function exactly the same way as those handle taps do, but without the handle. So it'll be a case of there will be a break in the pipe with a brass or a steel fitting, which will have space in the middle to put the flathead and you're just going to turn it 90 degrees to cut off the water supply. And this should be the last thing that you do before leaving the premises. And when you come back in a week to do the process again, it should be the very first thing that you do. It also gives you a chance to see as the pipes have relaxed any leaks that you may have in the machine. It's not likely, but it's always good to check. Also, your machine is not going to be happy trying to suck water through a closed pipe. You will know when it's happening because you will hear the pump scream first and foremost. You have a chance to turn off and correct, but just be careful. Last thing you do when you leave is water off. First thing you do when you get in is water on. And that should be everything that you need to do. Like I said, this is for hygiene purposes. This is after talking to our suppliers for our water filters. They've said that we need to do this every week to avoid bacterial and biological growth inside the machines. Not a fun thing to deal with when you do reopen the business and these simple preventative steps will help you stop that from happening.